Hi, welcome to a short video on the practical usage of Microsoft Power Query. I'm Ashish Mathur and in this video, I'd like to show you how you can look up where a search string appears multiple times in a particular range. For other MS Excel solutions, you may visit my website ashishmathur.com. Okay, so let's just see what the data looks like here. On this sheet called case one, here is my simple data set where I have a first column with a few names listed down and some random numbers assigned to those names. As you can observe, one name appears multiple times in that range up above. Now, if I wanted to know what the score of Ashish is, we normally write a VLOOKUP function to say that I'd like to look for B17 in the first column of names and wherever found, I need to stop at that particular row, go over to the next column and pull the amount out of there. When I hit the enter, You'll observe the VLOOKUP function only returns the very first instance of the occurrence of Ashish and not multiple instances. Now, if one wanted to return multiple instances, like as you see in the table just above over here, there are two ways of going about it. One would be to write an array formula as I've written in cell C11 over here. So what I've actually done is written my search string in this cell, which is B12. And in C12, I've written an array formula which essentially searches for every occurrence of Ashish and when copied and pasted down, it returns those multiple individual occurrences. Now, as you can see, this is a fairly lengthy formula to write and um, array formulas when written lots of times in a workbook or if written in multiple worksheets tends to slow down the performance of the workbook. Now, the other way to actually solve this problem is to use something called Microsoft Power Query. So this is what the Power Query solution would look like. In a separate range over here, I've typed what my search string is, giving it a relevant heading. So the heading there is name, names to look for, and my search string there is Ashish. So what I do is I simply select this range over here first. I go to Power Query, Excel data from table. Where is the data for your table? B2 to C9. Does my table have headers? Yes, it does. Click on OK. And first and foremost, let's give it a meaningful name called base data. I would not like to load this to the worksheet, so I uncheck the box over there and I click on apply and close. So I simply, imp I, I simply import table into Power Query and get that name called base data. The load has been disabled into the worksheet, so that's why you see load is disabled there. Now let's do the same for the search string as well. I select the two cells and head on to power query from table f2 to f3 my table has headers click on ok there and let's give this a name called search string i do not want to load this to the worksheet either i uncheck the box there click on apply and close now here's what we can actually do we can actually merge the two tables to get the effect of the array formula that we wrote over here so for doing so, I select any one blank cell, go back to Power Query, and there's an option there called Merge. I select Merge there, select tables and matching columns to create a merge table. Herein, you have to actually the, choose the table of your search string. Here, you choose the base data worksheet, select this column, and in the other table, with the help of the control key pressed, select the other column where you want to match the names. Okay, I now click on OK and you'll find names to look for new column over here with a opposite sided with, with two opposite sided arrows over here so i click on this names amount both selected i click over there and i seem to get what i want now just a, a bit of a change to made over here i right click i remove the column from there give it a meaningful name let's say name here Call it amount there. Merge table is what I want to call it. And I want to load this to the worksheet. I click on apply and close. And I get what I want. I can simply now cut this, go back to case one, paste the data there. Uh, paste it a row above there actually to be aligned with the array formula solution. Right click. Uh, and under table, under external data properties, I just uncheck the box for adjust column width so that every time I refresh, I do not want the columns to contract or expand. 
Now just to see whether it's working fine or not, if I were to enter Sanjay here and I right click and refresh my pivot table, you actually see Sanjay over there as well. If I were to enter Sanjay here, it'll be fine there. Get it back to Ashish. Change this to Ashish as well. Right click, refresh as in a pivot table and you get back to where you started from. So that's how easy it is to do it with the help of Power Query. I do not need sheet three where the original Power Query output came. I can right click, delete that worksheet from there. So that's how you do it for case one that we saw where our search tree was just one name. Now let's come on to case two where the data set is absolutely similar. And I would like to fetch all the amounts against the individual name types over here names typed over here. So if I type in Ashish, it should return the first occurrence of Ashish. So that's why it's 100 there. If I enter Suresh, the first occurrence of Suresh, that's 300 there. If I enter Ashish yet again, I'd like to, I'd like it to return not 100 over here, which has already come over here, but instead 400 over here. So the second occurrence of Ashish. As you can see, there's once again a similar array formula that I've had to write to fetch this data into this table over here. Now, if I had to once again follow the Power Query solution, I can follow very, very similar steps. So I select this over here. I go to Power Query from table. The range selected my table as headers. Click on OK. And uh, let's call this base data 2. I do not want to load this to the worksheet. Apply and close. I do the very same for my search string as well. I go to Power Query from table. F2 to F4, my table has headers, click on OK, and search string 2. I do not wish to load this to the worksheet, apply and close. Now, under Power Query, I click on Merge. In the first dropdown, I choose search string 2. In the second one here, base data 2. I click on this column, hold down the control key, Click on the names column over there as well. Click on OK. Click on the arrow symbols over here. Expand both the columns. Right click, remove this column. I do not need it. Give it a meaningful name. And give this one a meaningful name as well. Merge data 2. I'd like to load this to worksheet. Apply and close. And I once again get what I want. If I cut the data, go back to case 2 and paste it over here. As you can see, the results over here exactly match my results over here. And as shown earlier, the result is refreshable. So if I were to change any data in my search string range or in my base data range, all I need to do is right click here and do a refresh. Thank you for watching this video.